Welcome back! In this video we are going to take an overall look at the whole of the Shiminke Super Granulation Limited Edition range. It's a really long name. And let you know what I feel about these colours and the range as a whole. And also I'm going to try and figure out a way to help you a little bit in narrowing down what colours you should go for. We've spent the last five videos going through each of the colour groups, the Tundra, the Deep Sea, the Glacier, the Galaxy and the Forest colours. Let's start with the good points and the good points are that if you are a granulation fan then this range is amazing and it's actually quite nice because Schmincke don't tend to do that many heavily granulating colours and that was definitely a niche that they were missing out on and I think this fills it really nicely. The other great thing is most of these colours are super easy to re-wet or easy to re-wet. There was only one or two colours that are harder to re-wet but in general it's great to have granulation range where you know it's going to be easy to re-wet and you don't have to sit there for ages rubbing away at your paint with your expensive brush that's getting damaged each time. That's a great point. Another great point definitely is that there are some very interesting colours and there are some very nice mixing colours as well which I went through in the previous five videos. Then finally right now it's the on-trend thing. A lot of brands are doing these granulating dual colour paints like the Galaxy Violet, Tundra Pink, Tundra Orange and yes completely agree with you when you say but I can mix that on my palette and that's fine if you are a in the camp of loving mixing all your colors then great you do that but we have to recognize that there are some people who find it easier and less stressful if some colors come already pre-mixed and this is this whole range is definitely directed towards the camp rather not mix if I can get it in a tube people and a lot of people look down on people that want the colors already pre-mixed. I've not found a logical reason why that is. I think it's just two different style and neither is better or worse and can we all please give each other some room to just do our own thing? Thank you very much. I'm going to rearrange this in the order of paints that I would personally go for first and then I'm going to talk about the downsides. In terms of my top colour choices, I would say these are my two, four, six, seven, top seven colour choices. First up is the Glacier Brown, not surprising, it creates beautiful Jolto mixed colours which is what I'm looking for in this kind of hue and it makes the non-granulating colours granulate so I think that's really useful. And then it's the Galaxy Pink just because it's so beautiful on its own. Tundra, because I've gone on about this, how this is like sunset and sunrise on its own. Deep Sea Black for how textural it is and I really love this look and I can really imagine like dark stormy sea sky kind of colour. Forest Blue just because it's a beautiful colour. Glacier Green because it reacts so interestingly and fun with the warm colours in the colour mixes. And then Tundra Green as well for how beautiful it mixes with the Queen Rose. It's like, a, I can imagine like a dragon's egg being painted in this colour. We are back on looking at the full range. One of the biggest problems that this range suffers is the fact that we have no idea, no information on the concepts behind each of this these colour groups. I think the forest range is the easiest one to understand but this range came out after the Deep Sea, Glacier and Galaxy came out and when we saw just the Deep Sea, Glacier and Galaxy I had no idea what the differences between these three groups were. I actually asked Shminke, they didn't answer. They were like, they answered all my other questions but they just did not answer which kind of tells me that they probably either didn't know the concept solidly or that the person that wrote back to me didn't agree with the concept. I don't know. 
but for whatever reason they didn't answer there's also no like blog post or leaflet or anything that explains the concepts behind these colors I had to make these sheets and it was only through make marking the original colors and I was like oh I'll mark all the granulating colors that I figured out the reason why this whole range is called super granulating is because unlike other brands that are making these dual granulating colors these colors are all made with all granulating colors so the first color and the second color or even the third color are all granulating colors we didn't get any info on that and i've searched through schminke's website and i got people who can speak german search through the website for me thank you lana and they, we just could not find any info when you look at brands say like daniel smith who are very clear on their marketing like primatech are all about these genuine ground down semi-precious to precious stones and they love writing the fluff for every single color has like an essay on how magical that color is or if you look at the lunar colors you know that all of them consistently have pbk 11 the lunar black or the other colors in that range there is no consistency here whatsoever if they said like this range is ultramarine blue plus lots of different colors and this one is like i don't know cobalt turquoise and lots of different colors if if they did it that way there's just no consistency if you go to ev's discord channel which i will leave a link to down below because it's an awesome resource anyway and go into the art talk i think ginger snaps correct me if i'm wrong and i'm sorry if it's wrong made this insane map and i will see about asking her if i can pop an image on here so if an image appears on here then she said awesome yes go ahead if not then go ahead and go to the discord and just search for it she made this insane map of how the different original colors relate to each other for this entire range and there is just like no logical reasoning whatsoever another thing that i definitely think hurts them is having just so many launched in well not one go but in two goes and all of them being so similar and just losing your audience as to how to pick what color because very very few people will be able to buy all 25 of these colors i'm incredibly fortunate in that i have all you guys' support on patreon and on the jackson's affiliate links and and you guys watching these videos that i can financially justify buying these and create them into dot cards and share them with you guys and stuff so i can get 25 colors and have a look at them in detail like this but how many of us can actually do that? I feel like Shiminge really, really lost people on, hey, here's a guide to how to pick this. Here's some clear messages. Another point that I think is they're failing is there are some colors that are so similar. Let's actually move this around and gather together very similar colors. We're going to take a closer look at the really similar colors. And I'm also going to help you right now to choose which colors you should go for if i can there's a lot of colors that i'm like i still don't really know the difference and i don't see the point of having so many of them and the worst ones out of the lot are these blue colors and it's not really surprising because i mean these two are the worst when i saw the mother colors for these two i was just like what are you on about they're, they're exactly the same mix it's just one's more cobalt tea and the other one's more ultramarine blue i don't think anyone needs both of these i mean if you have these two colors on your palette then you don't need it at all but just having two colors that are like this i know we have other colors that are very similar or even the same pigment with different shades but i mean look at these two they're so similar and the other thing that i really don't like about these two is the fact that it's they both suffer from this shine so in terms of these four i definitely wouldn't recommend either of these two personally because they're not good paints in that they suffer from 
the shininess in the mast and where's the deep sea blue and the glacier turquoise is a little bit better in terms of the quality of the paint that it doesn't suffer from the shininess but yeah if you look at all the original colors and i'm actually really glad now that i did this because it makes it really easy to see why these are so similar is because well these two are exactly the same pigments and then this is these two either of these two or this plus manganese violet and then this is just this with the ultramarine blue and the manganese violet swapped out you don't need all four just pick one i recommend this or this depending on whether you want like a more ready blue or a greeny blue that is the only difference if you even go for these four i don't think these four are the most exciting colors in the range there are a lot more exciting colors happening that are more versatile and useful personally wouldn't bother with any of these four but if you want to then go for either of these next up are these three colors they are very similar but unlike the previous ones the original color is a little bit more different but the result of it is still quite similar and i know i put cobalt green dark on here somebody pointed out that how can you get purple from these two good point probably wasn't cobalt green dark it's probably another pb26 pigment i'm sorry i guessed wrong we just have no reference and but anyway these are all the really violety blues and tundra violet is definitely the violetest the most violet of the three. All three of them unfortunately suffers from shine in the master, which is not great. And I do feel like there are other colors that are better that are also similar, like the deep sea black is very similar to these two also. I personally wouldn't go for either of these two just because, I mean, I wouldn't normally go for all, any of these three because they're all shiny and they, you know, that is a problem when, I like to paint really close to the master, and but I don't want the shininess. But I'm only tempted by the tundra violet because of this sunset sunrise looking thing. Next up, we have these tealy turquoisey colors, and they're pretty similar, especially the glacier green and the deep sea indigo, but also the deep sea green. Like if you have one of these, you don't need the other. How would you pick between these three? If you really hate colors that are hard to re-wet, then avoid deep sea green. Even though like, I feel like deep sea green is a beautiful, beautiful color. Also, if you have high tinting strengths palette, then maybe avoid the deep sea indigo because it is low in tinting strengths and that's gonna struggle. However, if you have a low tinting strengths palette, then this might be the better option for you in that it's gonna be easier color mixing with the rest of your colors. Also with these two, the granulations are cool colors. So you have the violet granulating here and the ultramarine blue granulating here. But with the glacier green, you actually get the potter's pink granulating, which does create some beautiful color mixes with the warm. So if you want that and you do a lot of color mixes and painting with warm colors, then this might be a really interesting addition to your palette. Then we have these two, the glacier black and the deep sea black. And I said on, I think the glacier video that these two are so similar and it's not surprising because it's, PBK11 with PB35, and then this one just have cobalt blue deep. Between these two, I would pick this one because it's more textural and it's really exciting for me as an abstract painter. But it's more about, do you want a warmer black color or a cooler black color, I think, in, in general. The other thing is deep sea black has a slightly more higher tinting strength than the glacier black so that is a consideration to keep in mind depending on what kind of palette you have the glacier brown and galaxy brown the glaciers deep seas galaxies they have a lot of really similar colors in common that you just would not understand the difference unless you do tests like this which is why i'm really glad i'm doing these tests and i hope these tests are useful to you guys between the glacier brown and galaxy brown the main difference is that this one is super high tinting strengths and this one is just high tinting strengths 
but not super high. Also, the Galaxy Brown suffers from a slight shininess on the mass tone. It, they are both beautiful, beautiful color mixing color. This one results in a deeper, richer color, more jewel tony, and this one it's not quite so rich, but it's probably easier to mix with on most people's palette. If you have a low tinting strings palette, just don't bother with these two because these paints will eat up your other paints so fast. But if you have a medium to high tinting strength, these two are great if you want a color that neutralizes your ultramarine blues or any of those kind of colors or any colors with similar hue, but you want a granulating version rather than a non-granulating version and you want it a little bit opaque, then these two are a great choice. And you can pick between these two depending on how brave you feel in your color mixing. Go for this one. I would recommend this one because of just the resultant color, but I also know that this is more tricky to mix colors with because it's such a high tinting strength color. If you don't feel so brave, then go for the Galaxy Brown. Next up, we have the Deep Sea Violet versus the Galaxy Violet. And it's not surprising because they're both ultramarine blue and then just two different additional color. One's mahogany brown and potter's pink. They're quite similar in temperature as well so you get quite similar temperature results in the mixes this is obviously more inky blue and then this is the more bright violet this is definitely the brighter color and the bigger contrast in terms of the two colors and how they granulate through the thing so if that's what you're looking for go for this one because this one you don't see the color split quite as much Next up, we have these three colors, the Tundra Green, Forest Olive, and Forest Brown. And they are all kind of these olivey muted green color. And I don't think you need all three. Ways to pick between these three. This one is easy to rewear. And also, this one is super high tinting strength. So you get gorgeous jewel tone colors. Now, when you compare that with especially the forest olive which is low tinting strengths you're going to get a lot paler results so i would pick if it was between these two pick depending on a how high your tinting strengths are in your entire palette like if you have a lot of quins and thalos go for this one if you have a lot of the more cobalts and viridian and things then go for the forest olive or i mean even if you have high tinting strengths you can achieve these lovely pale colors with the forest olive if that's what you're looking for it's just it's a little bit tricky in mixing and it's going to be a learning curve and then somewhere in the middle is the forest brown but when you look at the colors that you get from tundra green and forest olive this to me feels a bit meh so i wouldn't bother with the forest brown just pick between these two and that, i still love that color another way to pick colors in this maze of colors that, that we feel very lost in is to pick the colors according to how high your tinting strength on your palette is here i've selected the four of the highest tinting strengths and i would call these four super high tinting strengths and i've put them in the order of how high tinting strengths i feel they are with the glacier brown being the most high mega tinting strengths only go for the great glacier brown if you feel brave but if you do feel brave and go for it then you're gonna get amazing amazing results same as Tundra, Galaxy Pink, and Tundra Violet. So only go for these colors if you have super high tinting strength colors on your palette. As I said, Queens and Thalos, because those are the only colors that these paints won't eat up as much. If you have paler colors on your palette, these paints will just eat up those paints and you're gonna have such a hard time getting good mixes that keeps both of the color you're mixing alive and then we have the high tinting strengths colors and that is the forest green the galaxy brown deep sea black 
Tundra Blue Galaxy Black. Did I say Galaxy Black before? Deep Sea Black, Galaxy Black, Galaxy Blue. These names are just so confusing. These are what I would call the high tinting strength colors, but not super high. So if you have high tinting strength colors, these will slip right into your palette and you'll have fun time with them. However, I don't think any of these are great at mixing color per se. I think this is the only good mixing color. So if you are looking at the range for a good mixing color and you want a high tinting strength but not super high, go for Galaxy Brown. The others, enjoy them for their own colors on their own and how they look because some of these colors are very beautiful like the deep sea black and the tundra blue it's just if you put it with other colors it's gonna be just as alive then the other lot i want to show you are the low tinting strengths colors and it's these four the forest olive tundra orange deep sea indigo glacier turquoise they all result in these beautiful soft palettes so if you are looking for that kind of thing especially the forest olive is beautiful colors then these four are great also if you have a low tinting strengths palette with lots of soft colors then these will fit in with your palette so much easier because you're not having to fight one color against the other to make a mix where it honors the colors of both of the colors you're mixing and just for reference i'm going to show you the ones that i didn't label as any tinting strengths at all we have the deep sea blue the so when i don't label anything in terms of tinting strengths it was just like medium deep sea blue glacier blue glacier black glacier green deep sea green galaxy violet deep sea violet tundra pink forest brown forest gray and forest blue. That's it for the entire Schmincke limited edition super granulating range. I will let you know if there's new, anything new and I will make dot cards out of it because you guys seem to love these granulation colors. I hope this video was useful to you in terms of getting to know the colors and figuring out, hey, how do I pick between these colors? They're really similar. Definitely don't need all 25. And I really hope that the series have helped you pick between the 25 if it has and you want to buy them. I have left links down in the description below on where to get all these paints. And if you can use those links, that helps this channel hugely. So thank you so much for everyone who has been using it. That's it. Next month, we are back to the Colossal Color Showdown. It's Cobalt Violet next month. So I will see you then. Until then, have a great time picking between these colors. Let me know which colors you have bought. I'd be really interested to know what colors you guys have chosen for yourselves and like why you've chosen those colors. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next video. Bye!